Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all my baggage droppers around the world, welcome to another episode of Drop Your Baggage with your host, Charles Wolfork. This is where we help people let go of some things that have been bothering them at the in just a second. And today we have another amazing guest. I'm so excited about this. She's such a boss. All right. This is Veronica Nazia. But before we get into how incredible this woman is let's i would ask you to please consider hitting the like button if you're on facebook and uh if you are on youtube and if you're on podcast just buckle up because we are about to take a wild ride with this phenomenal woman now veronica natia is from toronto ontario canada Born in Jerusalem, this this rock star speaks uh, speaks seven different languages, and she is a part of the travel industry. But she is an OG in the travel industry. Like and she started her career at seventeen, and she looks like she's in her twenties. So that must have not been very <laughs> long ago. <laughs> she holds a amazing position, a nice cushy position as the COO of Hudson International, which is the biggest cargo company in Canada. But now she's pivoting. She's doing what her heart's desire is, and that's coaching and mentoring that she's been doing since she was twenty-two, and it, it is helping her empower women to perform at a high level. But most of all the most incredible job that she has is being the mother of two amazing kids. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you Veronica Natsia. Right, what's up, Veronica? Hello, hello. What's up, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. Please, that's all I ask you to do is just have a lot of fun. Now, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica, thank you so much for showing up for your divine appointment. I just I know I'm hitting people up randomly and what what made you want to do like do this podcast with me even though I like you never met me before. Your authenticity and your uniqueness. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I'm super excited to be here today, Charles, because you know what? I'm I'm always eager to learn uh, from fellow coaches, and I can't wait to experience, you know, your unique coaching skills. Let's do it. Now, <laughs> we met each other, uh, well, we met each other because I hit you up um, from, because I saw you in a, the Unleash the Power Within group. Now, Unleash the Power Within is a Tony Robbins event that her and I attended, uh, virtually and I just knew that she was a rock star why did you what was your intentions behind going to unleash the power within honestly just I wanted a different experience mm -hmm. I wanted to see you know um, different like I said you know I'm always eager to learn and I wanted mm -hmm. to have that different experience yeah I mean, and your life has just been full of experiences. We chatted for a bit. We chatted for like 30 minutes before we even got <laughs> like, Can you really believe it? Time just flew. Um, you told me that you had moved over here and you moved to New York. And mm -hmm. can you give people a little bit of, uh, uh, give people a little bit of info about your, you know, just your experiences that you've had so far? Okay, so the, at the age of 17, um, I started working in the travel industry back home in Israel and entered university by the time I was 21 and graduated university. I was offered an amazing position by one of the largest uh, travel companies in Israel that actually expanded and moved to uh, New York. So at the age of 21, I was living the dream. And it was amazing, you know, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I then got married, moved to Canada had my beautiful son who is almost 13 <laughs> uh, got a, a, a divorce one hell of an experience yeah. <laughs> and then I got into another relationship in which I have my most adorable beautiful beautiful little girl um, I should mention she's biracial yeah mm -hmm. I'm all for that <laughs> I know that's uh, right. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been, you know, I've been coaching and mentoring mostly within the travel industry since I was 22. Yeah. And um, I was doing both things at the same time, you know, working my day job, which I'm not a nine to five person. So my job was never a nine to five. I got a lot of space to create and really motivate and, you know, 
build teams and company cultures to that super high performance level, mm. which allowed them to serve, you know, companies, marquee clients, and then generate more. Not only, you know, make, because like I said to you before, money means nothing to me, absolutely mm. nothing. Mm. But it, it was beautiful. You know, the process was amazing because the more, you know, the company generated and their impact uh, on certain charities, you know, was, was a, on a larger scale. Mm. And I was, honestly privileged to be a part of that process. Mm. Um, and now mostly what I do in my coaching is I'm a self-development high performance coach and I work with women that are over 40 um, that are looking to scale, you know, to the, their next level. And I do this through, you know, helping them gain confidence and, you know, be the master of managing their time. Amen. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing journey. Oh my gosh. And you've been coaching, you said, since you were in your twenties, 22 yeah. years old. Goodness gracious. And, and, and that's all it's been about is that impact that you have with people. What's been the biggest reward behind your coaching? I mean, of course, you, yeah, just... always impact, always impact. You know, I, and I never, ever, ever concentrate on the outcome. Mm. I concentrate on the process and on the impact. And when you do that, you know, this is something I can share with all our fellow coaches or anybody out there mm -hmm. concentrate on the impact the money will come like that mm -hmm. if you concentrate on the money mm -mm, it's not gonna work real talk real talk and and you you said earlier that you know that oh so we have different three different things that i said that you could go ahead and clear up you could clear up anger sadness or fear and you chose fear <laughs> <laughs> but you said that fear is your biggest motivator in fact you said that your motivation is connected to your power so it's kind of like fear is connected to your power why would you want to release fear if it's if it's getting you to where you are today look realizing it you know through my self-growth and my self-development process especially in the last decade you know i've experienced um you know, it's great. I'll share it. I don't care. You know what? <laughs> I believe the more vulnerable we are, the more we grow. Amen. So a decade ago, I went through a, a, a divorce process in which I found myself, you know, standing in the local grocery store with my two-year-old son at the time. And I remember if it was just now, I had, you know, a few specific items in the, in the shopping cart. And then when I got to the cashier, I took out my debit card and the total bill came to $21 in some sense. And my debit card was declining. Mm. So I realized I didn't have a place to live. I did not have enough money to buy my son essentials. And, you know, in that moment, like kids, especially, you know, your, your own kids, they sense you. They sense that something is wrong with you, no matter how old they are. Right. And my son looked into me, you know, was like, he says, Mama, are we going to be okay? I looked at him and, you know, my answer was like, hell yeah. Hell you don't yeah. worry, buddy. And I got out of the store and, you know, I just, I had this aha moment where I said, you know what? Fuck it. Hell like, yeah. I'm not going to live my life to please anybody else. Like, I, I'm on a mission right now. You know, I'm on a mission to take care of my son, to provide for my son. And in that very moment, I also understood what my mission in life is. You know, my mission is to end child hunger. Because no mother should feel that way. And no child should experience hunger on any level. Mm -hmm. And that fear of not being able to provide for my son. This is the fear that motivated me, you know, to, to get my shit together and start acting. And I made some, you know, huge decisions and I just follow through. I made a plan and I clearly follow through and I parted ways with, with many people that were, were in my life at that time, including my own immediate family, because mm -hmm. nothing was going to hold me back. Absolutely nothing. 
So I moved forward and I got to where I got, you know, today. And like, I have the privilege and, and the honor today to help and impact other lives, other mothers, you know, and other children that can't afford to feed their children. And today, you know, I, I work with a lot of charities, especially back home, mm -hmm. you know, and I impact their lives and I help. Because I don't want, you know, if I could hug the entire world and, and, and you know, make sure I can feed every kid out there, yeah. I, I would do that. And this is what I want to do. Holy shit. Wow. And, yeah, and that fear motivates me. But, you know, going back to your questions, why I want to get rid of it? I don't want to get rid of it. But let's put it this way. I want to make my fear my best friend. Hmm. You know, I want to be able to literally say, hey, you know what? Okay, I experienced this fear right now, but how is it serving me? Mm -hmm. Is it really like this second or in this moment that my, this particular fear I'm experiencing right now is going to serve me well and keep mm -hmm. motivating me? Mm -hmm. Or it's like we talked about, you know, it, it, it will slow my process. And this is where... You know, like I'm so used to that high performance mm -hmm. that I've, you know, I've been, this is the life I've been living since I was freaking, since I can remember myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to keep it and I manage to do it. I manage. But then again, you know, like if I know without the fear, I'll be like the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. You move at light speed over here. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You said that. It, 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 I mean, just that, that little bit of hesitation, that little bit of mm -hmm. hesitation holds you back from getting to what you, uh, what you want to do. Yeah. And it's a fear of, so, so from that traumatic moment that you had with your son, it was a fear of not having enough. So therefore, boom, you made that decision that you were going to always have more than enough and all the abundance. And, and now I mean, you still hold that fear. So, mm -hmm. so like, and like I said, you know what, if I look at my bank account, I have no, no reason to be afraid. Right. But again, you know, it's that thought in the back of your mind that, and you know, this is something I never thought about. What a... It's that fear that it will end. It's that fear that, you know what, mm. what's going to happen if I won't be able to do that. And like I said, you know, I have two kids from yeah. two amazing, you know, men, mm -hmm. but when I parted my ways with both of them, I was very clear in my, you know, I, in the separation or divorce agreement, like I want full custody of my kids. Mm -hmm. I want absolutely nothing from me, not from me, no, from my kids. All I want is my kids. Like, I don't want, and this is the best thing I did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and like, I went to that extent, you know, to make sure that God forbid, if something happens, you know, they're set and, and, and like, I've taken all these precautions mm -hmm. or you know, whatever, you know, you want to call them. I don't know. Just to make sure that they're safe. But that fear is like that. What the fuck is going to happen if, if I won't be able to do that one day? And like I said, you know, what I want to do is really be able to create enough so they're almost like they're set for the rest of their life. Yeah, yeah. But again, I can't do that without letting go of that fear. <laughs> Hell yeah. Or at least I feel I can do it, right? In what ways do you self-sabotage yourself? Do you, I mean, is there something, is there like experiences to where you're like, oh, I, I see that I'm holding myself back, even if it's for a split second, that, that doubt. That, do you have, like, is there a story that you could tell us where you could be like, oh yeah, I, tr I truly recognize that my fear of not having enough or it will end uh, made me hesitate or whatever it may be. Yeah. Look, I... As I said, you know, I was in the travel industry since I was 17. Mm -hmm. And I had the best career one can have in that industry. Yeah. And, you know, COVID 
crushed that industry, crushed. Then again, I did not have to, you know, I had nothing to worry about because, you know, that industry is going to come back and I'm still going to be a part of it. I am still a part of it, but not that active, right? Right. And then I got this job offer and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Like, what if I'm not going to be able to make it that far or that good, not only from myself, but for people that I'm going to lead, you know, to get to that same, same level like I had in that other industry and to create that same impact that, you know, I created in that other industry and continue mm-hmm. to create that. Right. Cause I never really stopped. Mm-hmm. And then that hesitation, that fear was kind of like, you know what, wait, Veronica, because listen, man, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Like some yeah. people, not some, but I, I think for a lot of people, you know, who create, who, who desire, because we all desire different things. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really is an opportunity of a lifetime. Mm. And I accepted the fact that it's going to be a process to get to that, you know, super high performance, you know, build everything, create everything. It's amazing because I get to create everything the way, you know, I I envision it. Mm -hmm. So it put me back. But knowing who I am, knowing what my capabilities are, right? I was like, I ain't giving that up. I'm (laughs) in there full force all in, you know, it's going to happen. Hell yeah. But you know, it's that fear again of like, what if? Right? Yeah. Although, again, it's, I know it kind of contradicts because that fear doesn't hold me back from doing what I know I'm capable of doing. No. But again, it's like, you know, it's, it's like, it's like, God, like you have this constant itch. <laughs> yeah. you can get rid of right it's like i know it's the, you know i know it's you right like i no. want it like i i don't want it anymore <laughs> hey man the um where did that that in, intrinsic like that internal motivation come from because like you just gave yourself a, a a personal motivational speech is what you just did you just gave yourself a pep talk and you said screw that shit like <laughs> I, i'm doing this no matter what where did that come from you know, Charles, I'm going to answer that question, but it's a question that even my closest friends keep asking me all the time. Yeah. And, you know, it's something that even when I was 17 and 18 and 20, you know, when my, people ask me, yeah. the, the truth is that I was born motivated yeah. and I was raised by a man who was not only my father, but was my mentor uh-huh. and being confident you know, having that level of motivation and having these high performance, you know, habits built into me. It's all thanks to him. And, Mm. you know, when I was young, when I was like seven and eight and nine, and I had to do that, all that extra work. And I'm like, why do I, why am I doing this? Why you like that? (laughs) What what, what do you want from my life now? (laughs) And I did not appreciate back then, you know, how these habits that he was building into me, mm. you know, would help me become the person I am today and, and create that impact that I create in other people's life. Yeah. And so that's the honest answer because it's not something, it's not a process or a mindset change that I had to go through. You know, it's, it's the way I was like the world I was born into right. and, you know, the way I was raised yeah. and, and I'm honestly, like I consider myself, one lucky person Mm -hmm. and i try to do that with my kids i try to give it to my kids although i'm not as good as my dad was (laughs) but i'm I'm, I'm doing my best you know (laughs) of course of course i mean i'm sure your dad is like super proud of you for everything that you've done and of course carry on his legacy with his grandkids as well how old is your daughter my daughter is eight and you know what and guess what let me tell you about high performance yeah let's let's hear it (laughs) she has been doing uh, competitive gymnastics since she was two wow holy cow yeah and she trains she goes to school she has a learning disability mm. and she trains 30 hours a week holy shit she almost has a full-time job as a trainer you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> and this girl's with her learning disability she gets she gets straight a's in school yeah she does it all on her own mm-hmm. uh, she wakes up every morning 
Mm-hmm. Every morning she was about five and a half or six and she looks at herself in the mirror and she's like, I'm Carmen Clark. I'm the next <laughs> Olympic gold medalist. And you should ah, see that sassiness go. and attitude. <laughs> let's go. And it's like, you know what? Like this girl is going to make it. And whatever it takes for me, I'm there to help her and guide her, you know, anything she needs. Because yeah. I believe that working hard yeah. and working even harder. And yeah. harder and harder until you get smart. <laughs> That's the only way. That's the only way. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell and yeah. And I think, I think, you know what? I think her, like I think she was, I think she was really born motivated. Honestly. Damn. Like damn. I mean, I think it's osmosis that uh, you guys just all being around each other and having such an an attitude of excellence. Yeah. That's that's that one thing that you guys carry on from generation to generation. So the confidence is is one that she's modeling from you. I mean, what a great role model. What a great role model to have as a mother like you to, you know, have such a boss, you know, uh, such a spirit that like, wow, I want to be like that when I grow up. In fact, I am like that right now. You know what I mean? That's amazing, you know, because I had that honestly towards towards my dad, like, yeah. right, like I wanted to be him in a woman version, but it's yeah. amazing to have your own daughter, like, okay, I never thought about it, right, but it's funny because, you know what, when she falls or gets hurt right, yeah. in gymnastics, I mean, it's inevitable, Yeah. so it's amazing because she tells her coaches, right, like, they're, oh, Carmen, are you okay, and she's like, even with tears in her eyes, She's like, no, I'm fine. I'm going to suck it up and keep on going because that's what my mommy teaches me. And everybody, like, they're shocked, literally shocked from this. And she sucks it, sucks it up and she keeps on going. She doesn't give up. Holy hell. She doesn't give up. Yeah. Hey, um, and you know what? And, and to me, that's like, honestly, you know, sometimes as a mother, like, I'm not that objective. And, you know, I beat myself up and you could have, but now kind of the way you, <laughs> you, you know, let me see things from a different perspective, right? It's, it's yeah. like amazing. And I'm thankful for that. Like, thank you so much. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. I mean, you deserve it. You've worked your ass off. You've worked your ass off. And this is the woman that you are. And you stand in your power and you influence others to stand in theirs. And I mean, you're just raising another young woman that is just going to have just as much of a vibrant light as you are. So, hell yeah, I of so. course. Right, that's I the just, goal. That's I, the goal. <laughs> I just call it like I see it, baby. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. The, um, okay. So I didn't know that your mission was in child hunger. That's phenomenal. Ooh, that is good. That is, that is quite the goal. Amen. All right. That's Amen. quite the mission. Amen. But this financial fear has to go. So it's a fear of not having enough and a fear that it will end. But that's the thing. So you, but you have no, I asked the question before I assume it's something like, is it that I'm not good enough? Remember Tony Robbins said that you know, he said there was two major fears, which I, I am in my practice, I know that there's way more than two, but there's, he talked about two major fears. The one of them was, I'm not going to be loved. And the other one is, I'm not good enough. Did you struggle with, I'm not good enough at all? Hell no. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. I'm just making sure. Of course. No, uh, like I like, I know, like, I, I know, know it's kind of more, I know it's kind of more complicated to be honest with you, No. but I never had like the Maybe complicated not to you to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, no, I'm not going through it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know what? It's like I don't have that, you know, imposter syndrome where I'm not good yeah. enough. Yeah, um, yeah. Because if God forbid if I had that, then I wouldn't be able, you know, to perform the way I do, right? 100%. And Charles, you know what? In 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 my in my journey, mm-hmm. I learned that as long as you love yourself and you truly love and value who you are, mm-hmm. you don't need anybody else's love. Yeah. So the reality is that I honestly, I don't care if somebody likes me or loves me. Right. You know, I was taught at a very young age yeah. by my dad again when I started working. And he said to me, Veronica, listen, you don't have to like anybody. Nobody has to like you. You have to respect everybody and you have to make sure to earn respect back. <laughs> and 
as long as I respect and I'm respectful to others yeah. and I earn the respect back, yeah. baby, as long as I love myself, yeah. and my kids love me, people who I really care about love me, that's all I need. So no, I am loved. But I'm loved by the most amazing soul in this, on this planet, which is me, myself <laughs> and I, right? So... <laughs> I love that shit. Hell yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like, of course, you is the, you say you were born with confidence. I, I knew that was a, a dumb question. I knew it. I was like, let me ask you. No question is dumb, my friend. No question is dumb. <laughs> Not a dumb, but I was like, nah, I already know the answer. Of course. Of course <laughs> you're confident. Of course you done. But it's just uh, that one little fear. We go ahead and get rid of that. And we. I, I asked you, so... The show is going to be more, uh, um, it's not going to be just about changing one, anyone's perspective or everyone's perspective. It's about changing lives. So the life changer for you, you said you, there was a big, I asked you to either make smaller goals or a big target. And you said you wanted a big target. Um, so your targets were to continue, well, your really your goal is to continue doing what you're doing as far as the self-development and career-wise. So that's the smaller goal. But the big target is for two years from now, you said two years from now, I want to secure or I will secure my kids financial, uh, my kids financially for the rest of their life. So let me repeat that. Two years from now, I will secure my kids financially for the rest of their life. The confidence within that, though, why, why did you make that the big target? I'll tell you why, because you know what? Like, again, I said money means nothing to me and it really doesn't. I'm not talking about an emotional aspect because my kids are loved and the attention they get, you know, and the energy, yeah. it's not like quality time. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like quality time. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm, no. The energy that I invest in my children. Yeah, yeah. And what I do with them to help them not only create those, you know, high performance habits. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a simple example. My son and I, like he hangs out a lot in the park, you know, and in our neighborhood, he's a scooter addict. <laughs> and, you know, fortunately we live in a nice neighborhood, but, you know, some kids come from families, which, you know, they're not financially or emotionally stable. Mm -hmm. And, and you know what, and it, it, it's just the world we live in. And once a week, you know, during the, the, the summertime, mm -hmm. I pack a huge, huge, huge bag. And I tell you, huge, huge mm. water, snacks, like, you know, any, anything that, you know, kids like, right? Or mm -hmm. teenagers, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I go with him and my daughter. And I hand out, you know, water. And, and I make sure to always hand out, like, you know, two or three snacks for each kid. Wow. And the reason I do that is because I want to show my son, you know, the, the, the gift of giving. And it's amazing how he witnesses the impact that he creates. Because yeah. you know what happens? Those kids, they have like three snacks, right? And right. all of a sudden they go like, oh, you know what? My other friend didn't get one. So they, they share. Yeah. And then you should see the smile on their faces. And then mm -hmm. they, you know, it's a, the ripple effect. And I try to teach them values yeah. and, and, you know, being kind. Yeah. And this is how I invest my energy and my quality time with my kids. Yeah. And that's why I don't concentrate on the aspect of, you know what? I'm not going to spend that quality time with my kids or invest my energy because this is something I know it's built within me. I know I always have. So whatever yeah. I always have, I can always give. hundred percent. But like we mentioned, you know, a few minutes before, it's like that fear that what's going to happen if I'm not going to be able to create anymore and provide anymore. Right? right? Right. That's something that is not built within me. I have the ability to do it, but it's not my character. It's on my, you know, and this is why I kind of concentrated on that because this is my only fear that what's going to happen, you know, if, I don't know, two years from now, another COVID is going to come by and then God knows what's going to happen then. I'm not going to be able to be, oh, you know, that's okay. We'll go through it.
<laughs> Why the hell not? Do, I mean, do you know you know who you are? You know who you are. Why like, not? You like you are this freaking manifester. You're this freaking goddess that has had it to where you've worked and worked and worked and worked until you got smart to where you're at the, the top of the, you're at the top of your level. And then you, you help others get at the top of theirs. Like you have so much value. You, you have more value than most of the people on this earth right now, yo. Like you got so much value and you're, you're selling yourself short. I am, I know I am, but then again, I don't know. I don't have an answer. This yeah. is something that as much as, you know, I reflected and really peeled, you know, the layers and, and was diving in deeper and deeper. And this is something that I guess, you know what? I don't believe, I know everything happens for a reason. And yes. I know that in our life, in this very moment, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. Hell yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I know that this is, a, you know, I know that maybe, not maybe for sure. Yeah. I didn't deal with that a year ago, two years ago, and I'm dealing with it now because you know I have you, <laughs> and <laughs> and you're my blessing. And if nobody was able to, you know, get to the root cause of that, including my own self, mm. I know you will. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Ah! Let's do it. So it's fear of not having enough and a, and a fear that it will end. Time out. Did anything end when you were, did anything not last when you were younger? Nothing. Things already, always, always just became better and better and better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just that one, that traumatic moment with your son? That really, that was the one that got you. Fear of not having enough. You had abundance when you were you were young. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was that one moment. It was that moment. That Damn. one moment. How old were you? I was exactly 30, uh, 31. I'm old, baby. I'm 42. <laughs> so yeah, 31. You're 42? Oh my God. 42. Oh my God. You look amazing. Listen, I love, I'm proud of my years. Yeah. You know, I think I'm uh, amongst these, these women there that never, you know, never hide their age. I'm proud. I worked hard to get here. Come on, <laughs> worked hard. I worked hard to get here. I'm proud of my years. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, you look phenomenal. That's what's up. Well, thank you. So 30, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. All right. Is it all right with your unconscious? Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Um, this process that we're about to do is called mental and emotional release. Now you could say mental and emotional release therapy, which my teacher, Dr. Matt James, uh, who is in, in uh, over there with the Empowerment Partnership. <laughs> Shout out to the Empowerment Partnership. They're awesome. Um, he teaches uh, mental and emotional release therapy. He created it, in fact. And um, I tweaked it a little bit for my clients just to have my own little, you know, practice. Uniqueness, and, and, yeah. Oh my gosh, and it works. Um, and this is a NLP technique. It's a timeline therapy. And that's, that's where we're going to be going, in fact, because there's three things that you need to uh, do in order for this process to be successful. Number one, you need to use your imagination. Number two, you need to follow directions. And number three, you need to trust the process, know that I'm your guide and I'm gonna be leading you through this easily and effortlessly. I'm all in, all in baby. Let's go. And when I talked about um, using your imagination, that's what we're gonna to do to create your timeline. So if your past could be to your left, to your right or behind you, where's your past? All right. Where's your future? Wow, I don't know why in the back. Crazy. Let's shift okay. that. Yeah, let's shift that. <laughs> let's shift that because we're not going to move back. I'm just following my backwards. energy, right? Like I'm yeah, just yeah. following my energy, but. So if you could shift that, that energy. Right here. Okay. Right somewhere here. So, so you're left, left and forward. 
Yeah, left and forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. So the right is your past, left and forward is your future. Perfect. Is it all right with your unconscious mind for you to release this fear today and for you to be aware of it consciously? Yes. What is the root cause of this problem? The first event, which when disconnected will cause this problem to disappear. If you were to know, when was the first time that you felt fear between the ages of birth and seven? How old were you? Five. You said five? Yeah. All right. Do you have a specific event in which you remember at five years old in which you felt fear? Yeah, I was in um, in Disneyland in California and I got lost. <laughs> I kind of wandered around. Yeah. And I clearly remember it. I, know, I remember exactly what I was wearing. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> and I was looking for my parents. And back then, like, because my English, you know, English is not my mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was looking for help. Um, I was looking for help and I actually managed, you know, one of the security guards actually took me and then they announced my, all I could say is my parents' name, mm -hmm. names, right? And they announced it and they came and, and picked me up, but I, I was freaking out <laughs> crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy because the same thing happened to my, my little brother in Florida over at Disney World. <laughs> yeah. It's a crazy experience. I was yep. crying too. I, I understand. Cool. All right. Um, that's a really good one. So you can go ahead and close your eyes and relax. Open your eyes real quick. Open your eyes real quick. Okay. So with this, um, you're going to go throughout your whole timeline and you're going to go through the events in which you felt fear, but the fear of not having it enough and the fear that it will end. Those are the fears that I want you to focus on. And if you ever felt those fears in like, well, not high school, because you really, did you go, like, how does high school work in Jerusalem? It, just like, you know, just like in, okay, I'm like, just like in Canada. Yeah. So it's up to, it's high school is from grade 10 to grade 12. How, but you just graduated when you were 17. Yeah. Cause you graduate when you're 17 or 18 depends. Like, cause I was born in November. So, you know, I started school at, well, yeah, like gotcha. I graduated at 17. Yeah. Understood. Understood. So like, if there was any events that could happen in, um high school and on and on in your adventures where you felt like you didn't have enough or it will end i mean because there might have been something in there that might unlock something okay right that's what i want you to focus on i want you to release okay all right you can go ahead and close your eyes and relax and let me know when you're ready for the process I'm ready. That's right. Now, as we go deeper and deeper into this meditation, keep your eyes closed. <laughs> and just imagine floating outside of your body right here, right now, and looking at yourself from a third person point of view, just as if though you were a spirit or energy. Look at the gorgeous orchid and your nice fluffy sweater. And your nice background <laughs> and the screen in front of you. Let me know when you're there. I'm here. Uh, awesome. Now, just imagine floating up above your timeline into the past, above that first event in which you felt fear when you were just a little girl. And I want you to see yourself from a third person point of view. Let me know when you're there. No, I'm here. And as you see that little girl, about five years old, stay hovering right there and ask your unconscious mind what it needs to learn from the event. The learning of which will allow you to let go of the emotions easily and effortlessly. Your unconscious mind can preserve the learnings so that if you need them in the future, they'll be there. Just tell your unconscious mind to preserve the learnings. This is an exercise of forgiveness and compassion, forgiveness for yourself and others and compassion for yourself and others. Focus your attention upon how you're a survivor. Hurt people hurt people. 
we're all doing the best that we can with the resources and consciousness that we have. We can't control anyone else's actions, but we can control our response. We can grow stronger and wiser. And we're better people than we were when those events occurred. That's right. What does that little girl need to know? What is something positive and empowering you can tell yourself and everyone else involved in the event with the consciousness that you have today that will allow the emotions to evaporate like water on the concrete on a hot summer day? And as you preserve these learnings, the emotions are starting to dissipate more and more until they're all gone. Let me know when they're all gone. That's right. Yeah. I'm gone. <laughs> awesome. Now, just imagine floating up above your timeline deeper and deeper into the past above the dinosaurs. Let me know when you're above the dinosaurs. I'm here. All right. And now as you're above the dinosaurs flow deeper and deeper into space where space and the atmosphere connects and imagine your timeline is the size of a finger now. Let me know when you're there. I'm here. All right. And as you float there weightless in space, ask yourself now, where are the emotions? Tell me. Are they there or have they disappeared now? I feel nothing. Awesome. Float down inside the events when you were just a little girl and check on the emotions. Tell me, are they there or have they disappeared now? I don't see anything. I don't feel anything, no. Awesome. Float back above the dinosaurs and then float into space where space in the atmosphere connects. Let me know when you're there. I'm here. Awesome. Now listen closely, float high above your timeline, above each and every event in which you felt fear from birth until now in chronological order. Don't skip one event, preserve the learnings and don't come back to now until all the fear is gone. And when all the fear is gone, you let me know. This is an exercise of forgiveness and compassion, forgiveness for yourself and others and compassion for yourself and others. Focus on the fear of not having enough and the fear that it will end. Get rid of that lack consciousness. No more scarcity, nothing but abundance and prosperity. Focus your attention upon how you're a survivor. Hurt people hurt people. We're all doing the best that we can with the resources and consciousness that we have. And we can always get more resources and consciousness. <laughs> we can't control anyone else's actions, but we can control our response. We can grow stronger and wiser. And we're better people than we were when those events occurred. There is no fear. <laughs> That's awesome. Float down into your body and open your eyes when you're ready. Welcome back. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you smell lavender? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's funny. How did you know that? I did. I didn't. I did. That's a way to break state. Okay. I just, I just asked. <laughs> you know what? That's insane because, oh my God, you're freaking crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, I need to add on to a uh, sidekick to my resume. Because <laughs> no, you, you know what I saw when I opened my eyes? It's not funny. Like I, you know, love, lavender is purple. So I was like, all of a sudden I saw like purple around me. Mm. And I was smelling lavender, which actually grows in my backyard. Mm. Well, not now, but it's like, how'd you know that? <laughs> I, did, I didn't know that. I was just, it's just a, a smell and an essential oil. I, I swear I didn't know. Well, like I said in the beginning of this, I'm so grateful to be able to, you know, experience your unique coaching skills. I'm, I'm lucky. Oh, my God. I'm the lucky one. Thank you for coming on. So uh, let's not get out of the process too much yet. Okay. Yeah. Can you remember a time in the past in which you used to feel that old emotion 
and go back and notice if you can feel it or you may find that you cannot. I don't, I don't feel it. I feel something completely different. Well, what do you feel? I feel powerful. I don't feel that I try to convince myself that I'm powerful. I don't feel that I try to convince myself that everything is, is going to be okay. I just know. Oh, shit. <laughs> I just know it. I just see it. I, I don't need to convince myself or my son at the time yeah. that everything is going to be okay. No, yeah. I just know it. Yeah. There is no fear. There is power. Always. And I have, it's insane because I was so sad, but I don't see that sadness anymore. <laughs> I see this huge smile and, and, and happy. <laughs> I don't see it anymore. It's not there. Congratulations. That's awesome. Now, I want you, <laughs> you're like, the hell? <laughs> I want you to imagine going out into the future. Okay. So like time travel, go out into the future to any time in the future. Okay. Now, if the same thing would have happened in the past, you would have felt a fear of not having enough or a fear that it will end. And see if you can find that old fear, or you may find that you cannot. There, there's not such, there's not no such thing like not having enough. <laughs> I don't see it. It doesn't exist. It's not there. Congratulations. There's no such thing. There's no there is no such thing. Congratulations! You just released a bunch of fear. That's some weird process. No, honestly, like I'm being very honest, right? It's, it's I shouldn't say weird. It's different. Yeah. But it's so powerful. Hell yeah! It's so powerful it's crazy <laughs> wow i what i'm experiencing right this second is is not something that i think i've ever felt it's it's almost like complete peace mm. it's just like peace all of a sudden i can't explain it mm. like fearless I can't even say fearless. I can. I. I. I feel peaceful. Like so peaceful. Mm. Which your life should be full of. You. Ha you have nothing to worry about. You have nothing because you are a goddess. There's no concerns. Like, what, what concerns come to someone that just makes shit happen, turns everything and everything out of nothing. You know. If there is one thing that you gifted me today is peace, mm. which I haven't had in a long mm. time. And I did not realize mm. and was not aware that that fear was stealing my peace away. Mm. And you know, the constant like struggle within. Yeah. And what I feel right now, I, I don't know if I, ever felt this way? I'm sure I am, but I'm sure I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So I would say I, I, I can't remember the last time I felt this way. Mm. Just peace. I don't need to worry about anything. No. There's no reason. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. I, I'm, I'm still trying to, you know, embrace how I feel. Yeah. Because it's, um, 
it's almost like falling in love the first time and you're not sure what you're experiencing and what you feel. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you, you know what, what I mean. Like, if oh, you yeah. understand what I mean? Oh, of course, yeah. It's, um, I, I kind of, I almost don't know what to do with that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Bask in it. Bask in it. Bask no, I just really it. need to embrace it. And yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, it's it's a it's a a, a weird feeling because you've you, like you hold this baggage, you know, and you hold on to it so tight. I've held on to I used to hold on to my baggage. I'm not good enough, and people please, and you know, are am I good at like judgment or oh, fear of judgment and rejection? Oh no, you know, I just held I hold on to that baggage so so much, and then it's just that that when I dropped it. And you you talked about love. It's like following following in love with yourself all over again, for a different person. That you see someone so differently. You've had this image, you know, of this person in your mind so long for so long, and now it's like, no, this person is so gorgeous, so phenomenal. That it's, it's a new perspective on life on you. It's almost like I know. What, I, I like I said. I don't know even. What, I don't even know what to do with it. <laughs> like it's. What else can I do? You know what else can I conquer? Which other yes. goal can I achieve? Which, what other impact on a on a larger scale can I create? Yes, exactly. And it's. There's no need to have that fear. I can do it without it. I don't need that fear to motivate me. No. 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 Charles, you know, I've, I've collaborated with, with a lot of other coaches, mm. you know, because that's how we learn and that's how we grow. And, and I, I'm all for collaborate. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, you are truly, truly unique. Thank you. And I, I believe and I know that our uniqueness as humans, like as individuals, our uniqueness is our power. And man, the power that you have. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> it's like, but I don't know what to do with myself now. I feel too good. Like, what the hell, man? It's like, what am I going to go do now? Go dancing? Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Did you feel like, it? Did you feel you it? You know what? I, yeah, it's, and you know, it, it's, it's one other thing that just, I guess is coming to my conscience right now. Uh -huh. And I guess it's going to take time. You know, the more I reflect on what we just did and uh -huh. how, you know, it's like almost, you know, I believe the reason I believe and I know that every human on this planet can achieve whatever they want, yeah. whatever they truly desire yeah. is because we're, you know, all of us, we're whole, mm -hmm. complete and resourceful. Hey. And, you know, it's, we always bitch, excuse my French and complain no. about, you know, oh, we need money to make money. Oh, I don't mm -hmm. have the resources. Right. You know, it's not about what resources you have or not. It's right. about how resourceful you can get. Hell yeah. A hundred percent. Hell and yeah. you know what? I feel like we talked about this abandoned, uh, you know, and we talked about, I, I shared that feeling with you that there's no reason for it to end. No. It's like, I almost feel no. that the level of my resourcefulness or how resourceful I can continue to get yes. is, is limited. It's never going to end while I exist. It's never going to end. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what? And I always say, like, when people ask me, describe yourself. So, you know, usually people would start by, oh, I'm 42. I'm a mother of two. I'm, I always say something different, right? Yeah. They go, and this is why I am. Right? I'm a believer, I'm a fighter, and I'm an achiever. This is who I am. Yeah. And with the way I feel right now, without that fear, yeah. and with the, the limitless 
you know, uh, limit, limitless, you know, resource from this, right? Like I, like where, I, I can't even, you know, there, there is no end. <laughs> yes. It's bigger than the universe. Amen. Yes, exactly. And it's, it's, it's freaking mind blowing. I mean, you, you have no idea what I, or maybe you do. I don't know. Like I experience so much inside right now. Mm-hmm. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like there's a joy, a, a, like a pure joy of just getting rid of that shit. You know, it's peace. And what is more joyful than being peace? Like Amen. nothing. Yes. Yes. There's nothing. You're going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> you know what? I, you read my mind because two seconds ago, I'm like, I don't even know how the fuck I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> I am sleeping. I'm freaking reflecting. You know, I am sleeping. I have work to do. I'm not sleeping. I'm a high performer. You know that? <laughs> yeah. Like I sleep six hours. Believe me, I get up like as if I slept 10. I'm good. <laughs> it's like I have shit to get done. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, I have to help other people, right? To grow yes. and, 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 you know, have to create that impact. Yes. So no more hesitation. Something comes your way and it's like, go. It's just go. You know, can I? I like journaling. A lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if you don't mind, mm-hmm. if I, you know, and I'm sure since this is something that I was feeling quite often, mm-hmm. I, 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 well, I tend to think that I will encounter it again. Mm. And if I do, mm. obviously I'm going to journal about it because I journal about everything. Good. Do you mind if I share it with you? Hell yeah, you better. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I, if, if you don't mind, like, I would love to do that. I would, I would be honored. I would be honored because that's just another trigger we can get rid of. <laughs> yeah. You know? I don't know, you know, I don't like, I'm, I, you know, it's almost like, and the reason I'm hesitant is because you don't, you almost, it's almost difficult for me to believe the way I feel right now. <laughs> and right. I'm being like I'm being I'm being honest, right? I'm, no. I'm being straightforward. I'm being super honest. Real talk. And sometimes you know you you need to experience yeah. to believe. It's not yeah. only about affirmations. You know, you gotta go through these experiences. You know, you gotta go through. So I want to experience it and then see what my reaction is, and then like call you or whatever it is and say, Charles, listen, baby, <laughs> you did it. <laughs> you the one who did it. A lot of and people. You know what? And, uh, go sorry, ahead. Like I don't have, you know how sometimes you, it, it, there is a huge difference between believing and doubting. Yeah. So there is no doubt or lack of belief in what we just did because it was so powerful. like damn it you know but i just like like you know i I almost like want to want to prove for myself yeah yeah is it that it just can't be that easy Mm. (laughs) exactly you know what damn it like i don't listen i've been a coach yeah (laughs) and you know what to be to be a great coach Mm -hmm. you have to grow yourself you have to you know invest in your self-development and self-growth in order to be able to gain these skills to really help somebody yeah and you know and we spoke about it like oh you know i'm gonna help you scale to seven figures well sorry (laughs) you know no i'm gonna help you become the best you know person that you want to be and then you reach the goals that you want to not goals that are set by others right what is really you want amen and with all my years, and I said, like, I myself, you know, I, I, I tried, you know, because we coach ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I used, you know, I collaborated with others and, and, and also, of course, had great life coaches myself. Because if I, you know, I had moments in my life where if I didn't have these great life coaches, then I wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. And nobody was able to really get to that root cause mm-hmm. and eliminate it. And like I said, you, you know, I really, tr- I feel you did it. 
and uh, and and, you know, and and it's it's just insane. <laughs> I <clears throat> excuse me. I always tell people, I'm not a camel, right? I'm just a guy. Yeah, I, I'm you're not all gonna, just you know. I'm you're not, a guy. I'm a girl. Like yeah. no, a, a guide. A guide. Oh, a guide. <laughs> I'm just a guide. I'm I, yeah. like I'm not a camel. I'm not going to carry you from one place to the other. But you can carry yourself there. All I am is I'm just guiding you through the process yep. in order to get to that that place that you want to be. That you 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 entrusted me, some random guy. You just in, entrusted me to that, and it means the world to me. Listen. It means the world to me, yo. Like real talk, trust is worth more than gold to me. Trust is everything, especially in what we do, right? Yeah, like, yeah. The way I see people, we're all simple, right? We're simple. Yeah. Like I said, you know, like I misunderstood you, but it's it's like for me, you know, you're a you're a a guy, a, a dude, whatever you want, you know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a girl. We're all simple. We're all even. We're all equal. Yeah. But then we all are. We were different because we're unique, mm -hmm. and. In our, in, in, you know, in, in, what we do is we guide people from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. You know, from where they're at, we meet them where they are, and we get them to where they want to guide them to where they want to be. But exactly. But Charles, you know what? It's, it's, and I'm not complimenting you because, you know, like you already feel me, like I'm as authentic as it can get. You know, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but what you did is, is, and, you know what the reason i'm almost like kind of losing my words because i have so many emotions right now so i do apologize no you're good but you know like you asked me what made you you know like okay you know do that with me right like and i told you it's it's your authenticity it's it's you can't go wrong with that and especially we as coaches you know we we meet and we work with so many people in our lives that we yeah. can smell you know I don't want to say the word fake. I hate that word, but you know, we can smell people that are not authentic, that are just yeah. out there, not really to help and impact. Yeah. And you're not that person. And, you know, thanks to my intuition, you know, my, my, my intuition, which is very, very strong. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky because, you know, I get to work with amazing people, unique people, you know, and, and here, mm -hmm. like, like, look at my experience today. And it's not me. It's it's I didn't do anything to get here. It's you. It's the authenticity, you know, the the energy that you project. And and you're amazing. You're the powerhouse, not me. You. Thank you. <laughs> like, I, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, you better. <laughs> you better. <laughs> you better. <laughs> You know, like <clears throat> we're all we're people like you and I and other um, folks that are, you know, doing something to achieve. We work on ourselves and we re refine ourselves. So, like, you're not the person that you were ten years ago. Hell, I'm definitely not the person I was even five years ago. I, I've done this process over and over and over again. Whenever I see those beliefs that I don't appreciate and like, and it's about, I couldn't be, I, I, like five years ago, I couldn't be authentic. The, the bullshit in my mind, oh my gosh, it just haunted me and tortured me so much to where I would have to be someone else. I would always have to be something or someone else in, a, in an interaction instead of just feeling, feeling like how I, I want to feel, being who I want to be. And after so much of this reprogramming or seeing my true power, just like you saw yours, I was just like, it's just like, boom, you can, you can feel however the hell you want to, you can be whoever the hell you want to. And first of all, you got to be yourself. Just be yourself. Amen. Just be yourself. And as soon as you show that authenticity, real recognizes real and respects it. 100%. <sighs> Uh, no, I've never heard anybody say it better than that. Yeah, that's how it always is. Like, no matter what, the 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 authenticity that someone pours and exudes out of themselves, and that and like yourself with the confidence of being like who they are in their essence, like everybody just gravitates towards it and loves it, loves it. So just I'm like 
you showed up for this divine appointment. You showed up for this divine appointment. You trusted that that message was from somewhere and you followed it. You followed your heart. You know, a lot, I'm telling you, a lot of folks don't. A lot of folks don't show up for this divine appointment. And just thank you for doing so. Like, it means the world to me that, like, it's a blessing for me, just as, as much as it is for you. I swear, I swear. Because you talk about impact. Like, That's seeing you release that bullshit and then also having someone be able to hear this and learn about this modality, that's that's what it's all for right there. That's what it's all about. And then someone else can experience it just like you did. I wanna ask you for something. What's up? So the majority of my work, right, mm -hmm. is, 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 is a coach is I do lead, lead leadership coaching, you know, mm -hmm. inside of uh, corporations. And I focus a lot of my work, you know, outside of the corporate world. I work with women a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Mainly over 40. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since your niche, I guess, is much more, you know, um, how can I say it? Like you serve, you know, more people than I do <laughs> or you know you serve different like you know um again I'm telling you I, I have so many emotions that freaking my words don't even come properly like what the hell uh, <laughs> so silly. but I want to I want to ask you for something anything I would love to do some collaborative work with you and I would love to you know, to have other people where I really truly feel that they need a little bit more than, you know, let's, how are we going to put it? Um, you know, a little bit maybe deeper intervention like you just did. So I really want to collaborate with you. And, and, and I know a few people that are all in. And, and can we do that, please? Hell yeah, let's do it. Of course. Okay. Of course. The more blessings that I, I was born to be a blessing and service you is my are super. A blessing, super my you are. <laughs> uh, let's go. I'm, I'm always ready and willing to be a blessing. Anytime. Always, always. Of course. Thank you. No, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> That's what's up. All right. And. Let me go ahead and close it up. Let me go ahead and close, tie a bow on this one. And thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Drop Your Baggage. All you baggage droppers out there, you guys are awesome. Please, if you want to experience mental and emotional release, just like uh, Veronica did, please, please, please hit me up at charleswolfwork.com. Uh, um, oh, please give everybody your information for your coaching as well. You know, I'm, I'm very easy to find. <laughs> I love, you know, my, my, my favorite platform is Facebook, although Insta as well, but my Facebook is simple. It's Veronica Natia, mm -hmm. V-E-R-O-N-I-C-A-N-A-T-Z-I-A. And search up my name. You'll find me there. A lot of content, valuable content. Mm. And, you know, if you resonate with that content, just reach out. Drop a DM, anything. Just reach out. That's all. She's phenomenal. She's phenomenal, guys. And she doesn't bite. Okay. She's fierce, but she doesn't bite for real. For real. <laughs> she... <laughs> well, all I can say is you know me well already. <laughs> so hey, um, I love you guys out there. Um, please take care of yourself and take care of one another. Peace. Amen. Peace. <laughs>